Mount Rainier is one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world, and right now scientists are deeply concerned about it. Here's why. I'm at the base of Mount Rainier here in Washington State. This is one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world. It's actually the most dangerous volcano in the United States because it's the most likely to blow up. The thing about Mount Rainier is that it's a stratovolcano, but it's also filled with really volatile magma, so when it does blow, it's going to be violent. But luckily, we have a lot of warning signs. In fact, there was just a new study published last week which found something new and surprising about these warning signs. I'm going to tell you all about it. So, let's get started. First, why is this volcano so dangerous? Well, it's right here in the Pacific Northwest, which is home to 8 million people. Plus, it sits only 80 miles south of Seattle. In fact, if it were to erupt while people are sleeping, many wouldn't even realize what was happening until it was too late. And even worse, unlike Mount St. Helens, which had a very contained eruption, Mount Rainier is predicted to put out much more ash and debris, causing way more damage. So, why do we think it's going to blow? Well, Mount Rainier hasn't erupted in over a thousand years, and every time it has erupted, it's been a big deal. For example, between 12,000 and 13,000 years ago, it erupted so violently that debris fell all the way to Northern California. Eruptions like that don't happen often, but there are some clues that might mean that that's exactly what's going to happen next. For starters, Mount Rainier has been rumbling quietly beneath the surface for the last several decades. Also, since 1894, the U.S. Geological Survey has recorded 63 earthquakes that were caused by the movement of magma underneath Mount Rainier. And in recent years, the number of earthquakes seems to be increasing. For example, in 2020, there were five times as many earthquakes as the year before. What's even scarier is that these earthquakes are getting bigger. The biggest earthquake ever recorded in the region was a magnitude 7.3, and it happened in February of 2022. Now keep in mind, that doesn't mean an eruption is imminent. Volcanoes are monitored closely, and scientists can tell the difference between the types of earthquakes that are caused by volcanic activity and tectonic activity. But what they have noticed is that these earthquakes aren't random. They're happening along a line called the Cascade Volcanic Arc, and this arc stretches from southern British Columbia all the way down to northern California. And Mount Rainier isn't the only volcano along this arc that's been feeling some extra seismic activity lately. Mount Baker, for example, has felt a lot of earthquakes as well. But just because earthquakes are increasing doesn't mean an eruption is imminent. So how else can we tell if an eruption is coming? Well, another important clue comes from what's called a lava lake. When I say lava lake, I'm referring to the magma that sits at the top of Mount Rainier. Right now, Mount Rainier's crater is filled with magma, but we can't see it because it's covered with ice. But we know it's there because we can measure how much the ground above it is deforming. And we can also feel the heat coming from it. Now Mount Rainier's magma chamber isn't just one big pool of lava. Instead, it's more like a big pile of partially molten rock mixed with gas. And all of that gas builds up pressure inside the volcano. The higher the pressure gets, the more the magma tries to push its way out. And that's why we see the ground bulging around the volcano. But once the pressure gets high enough, the gas will break through. That's what causes explosive eruptions, and we call that magma highly explosive. And thanks to satellites and other technology, we can monitor the shape of Mount Rainier to see if its magma chamber is getting fuller or emptier. Just recently, scientists used radar to image the shape of Mount Rainier. And what they found was surprising. They found that the summit of Mount Rainier has inflated by nearly 15 feet over the past few years. And that inflation is happening faster than any time in the past 30 years. The authors of the paper concluded that the inflation could be caused by an increase in magma supply, an increase in gas pressure, or both. And once again, it's not just Mount Rainier showing signs of this increased pressure. Mount Baker is also inflating. All of this data is really important because it helps scientists understand whether or not the magma beneath Mount Rainier is changing. And if it is, that might help them predict when the next eruption will occur. But I hear you asking, how do we evacuate 8 million people without causing total gridlock? Well, 
that's where this last piece of data comes into play. See, it's not just the ground beneath Mount Rainier that's moving. The whole mountain is actually slowly sliding downhill, and in fact it's moving at a rate of about half an inch per year. But just like the earthquakes and the inflation of the mountain, this movement has been speeding up. In 2020, scientists noticed that the movement of Mount Rainier accelerated. They originally thought that maybe there had been an earthquake that they didn't detect, but after checking, they realized that wasn't true. Instead, they concluded that the increased movement was probably driven by increased fluid pressure. And you know what happens to be caused by increased fluid pressure? Explosive volcanic eruptions. Okay, so we have earthquakes, we have inflation, we have increased movement of the volcano. All of those things are consistent with magma moving beneath Mount Rainier. But it's not quite enough to say for sure. We also need direct evidence of magma. And luckily, we have some. You see, at the top of Mount Rainier, there are small holes where gases escape from the magma chamber. And once in a while, we can sample those gases. Back in 2021, researchers collected a gas sample from one of these vents. And what they found was surprising. They discovered high concentrations of water vapor and carbon dioxide. What's really interesting is that carbon dioxide is produced by both the partial melting of rock and the decomposition of organic matter. So, this was the first time scientists had direct evidence that magma was moving beneath Mount Rainier. All of this data is really important because it gives us insight into what kind of eruption we might expect from Mount Rainier. If there's lots of gas and the magma is highly explosive, then the eruption will be really violent. On the other hand, if there's not much gas, then the eruption will be much less violent. Right now, scientists are leaning towards a more explosive eruption because they have so much evidence of gas. But it's still possible that the eruption won't be as bad as they think. Of course, no one knows for sure what's going to happen. But it's always good to be prepared. Teely highly explosive eruption. But it's important to remember that not all eruptions are created equal. For example, some eruptions are mostly made of lava, while others are mostly made of ash. Ash eruptions are more dangerous because they send debris into the atmosphere, which can travel thousands of miles away from the volcano. Lava eruptions are less dangerous, but they can still cause damage by destroying homes and businesses. So, how big would the eruption have to be in order for us to start evacuating people? Well, according to the USGS, it depends on the explosivity of the eruption. For example, if the eruption is highly explosive and sends more than 10 billion cubic feet of ash into the air, then officials may consider evacuating people within 10 miles of the volcano. An eruption that sends more than 1 trillion cubic feet of ash into the air would likely lead to evacuations within 30 miles. And an eruption that sends more than 10 trillion cubic feet of ash into the air would likely lead to evacuations within 60 miles. Right now, scientists don't think that Mount Rainier is likely to have an eruption that big, but it's still possible. Okay, so let's say we do have to evacuate people. Who's in charge of that? Well, that's a great question. The responsibility for managing an eruption of Mount Rainier ultimately falls on local, state, and tribal governments. But the U.S. Geological Survey plays an important role in providing information and guidance. The USGS works closely with the states of Washington and Oregon and the tribes of the Pacific Northwest to develop plans for evacuating people from the area around Mount Rainier. These plans include things like setting up evacuation routes and shelters, the USGS also works with local emergency managers to educate the public about the risks of living near a volcano and what to do in case of an eruption. It's important to note that these plans are constantly being updated and improved. The USGS and other agencies conduct exercises to test the plans and make sure everyone is prepared. OK, so what should you do if you live near Mount Rainier? Well, the first thing you should do is make sure you have a plan in place for what you would do in case of an eruption. You should also make sure you have a go bag packed with things like food, water, and medicine. You should also stay informed about the volcano's activity by following the USGS and other local authorities on social media and signing up for their alerts. And finally, you should make sure your home is properly insured. So don't worry, you'll be fine. 
Maybe just back your car out of the garage so that if there's a pyroclastic flow you can get out of town quickly.